Otis, I'm having a little trouble hearing you if you are talking to me, just to let you know. For the city of Greenfield to join the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District, uh, which was submitted by uh, Director Bird. So this is pretty straightforward. It was funded already. Um, um, Director Bird, would you like to? Yes, uh, this is an important program. We're joining with other towns and we're gonna jointly, we're gonna be able to trap mosquitoes, identify the areas where the Mosquitoes do have Tripoli, and as if you if you know already that there's been two towns in our in our district in our county that have uh, Tripoli, so we want to identify those and we want to be able to trap them and treat them. So this will enable us to do this, and it's not a new program. Uh, the city of Greenfield um, was involved with this program back in 2015, 2016. I don't know what happened. I wasn't here back then, but this is a very valuable program. And it, since I already do have it funded, I would like to be able to join it. Well, um, would this um, would this be strict to council or is there um, is Councilor Gwynn, do you see a need for this to go to a and for any, any reason? I would think um, that it doesn't need to go to a and If it's already been approved, I think it's just more or less, I think it could go directly to agenda. So that's, uh, that's well. Um, so, Let's see. I do have one other comment, if yeah. I could. Please. Um, uh, we have, there's one Board of Health member who is now the chair that is going to oversee this. I can't add any more on to my plate, although I will be helping mm -hmm. her, but um, Jen Hoffman will be overseeing this. Okay. All right. Um, so, in that case, I think that'll go on the uh, council agenda. Or July 15th. Thank you very much. So next on the agenda is to repurpose 180,000 from Maple Brook Culvert uh, to INI for evaluation and repairs. Um, this is uh, an ongoing project, but um, if if Marlo is, if Director Warner's on the line, he can speak to this. But if not. Um, I'm sure that um, we can we can just go ahead and put it on the ways and means agenda. Um, at least I presume it would be going to ways and means. All right, so it looks like Director Warner's probably not on the line. Um, I don't see that he's logged in, Otis. No. Okay. So, so this would go go to Ways and Means, and this would also need a first reading. Is that correct, Kathy? Correct. Okay. So we can put this on the agenda for Ways and Means. Anyone else have any questions on that before we move? On? Okay. Next, we're on to Mayor's appointments. And there are many. Uh, Councilor Gwynn, this would go to A&O. Do you have any questions on this? Kathy, just checking with you. Um, are these on my agenda for tomorrow? Is that correct? These are the ones that are there? Correct. All right. So they'll be on tomorrow's agenda. I just, um, the only thing, Otis, is anything new, like when you were talking about the mosquito control, that won't, my meeting's tomorrow, right? So I, you know, I, I can't add it to the agenda. So we'd have to wait. That's why I wanted to bring it direct. We might discuss it, but these are on agenda. So 
Um, both this and the reappointments, um, not an issue. They'll be brought up at tomorrow's meeting. Okay, very good. Thanks. Okay, so um, the next is uh, placing the question for the acceptance of uh, the Community Preservation Act on the ballot. So that was language that was drafted um, by the city attorney and um, go straight so assuming since there's not really necessarily much opportunity Um, any discussion I, on this item? I could give a brief overview of why it's back on if you'd like me to. Yes. Okay. So after the council voted the Community Preservation Act, I reached out to the state to notify them that the council had voted it. The state notified me that the language had to be written by the city attorney um, and had to be put in the form of a question and the council had to vote to approve that language from the attorney and to specifically designate which ballot it needed to go on. It can only go on the November presidential state ballot. So that language is also now included in the order for the council to consider. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, um, well, there's um, my understanding is do not require a second reading. Um, these are important for council to hear uh, on July 15th. I'm having some issues. I'm not sure if we're having. Councillor Wheeler? Yeah, I lost you there for a moment. Okay, I'm sorry. yeah, I'm, wasn't, I'm not sure what was happening. So, um, the four transfers for the end of the fiscal year, which per Charter Section 57B, do not require uh, the usual process of first reading, second reading, public hearing, and vote. They can go straight to the council in order to, because of the end of the fiscal year, uh, to balance. But Liz can explain it much more succinctly. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Liz? Um, yep, this is the an end of year transfer all end of year transfers must be done by july 15th we so just so happen to have a regular council meeting july 15th so that worked out well um and basically we're just trying to cover deficits within the existing budget with money already in the existing budget so it's it's an interdepartmental transfer and it does require council's approval to do that um, and it, it's done at the end of the year so that you don't have to raise this um, on the tax recap, which would increase the budget and in, for fiscal 21 and increase the tax rate. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? Um, all right, I'm not hearing any. Um, for full council, obviously. Okay. Um, 
Vice President Wheeler. I see that he's still logged in, Jenny, but I don't know if we're having some audio difficulties. Otis, can you hear us still? So, Councillor Wheeler just left the meeting. I believe he's having some technical difficulties. I'm going to make a note of it for the minutes. Would someone, um, Councillor Glynn, would you be willing to take the seat again with the consent of the rest of the committee members um, until Councillor Wheeler comes back in? I have no objection if uh, everyone's in favor. I'm good with that. I'm in favor of that. Um, counselor, does any other counselor have an objection? None here. Sounds fine to me. All right. So, uh, Jenny, is there something we can, as a group, um, answer for you? Um, this is actually for Director Gilman. Are, will you be a Wednesday at um, Ways and Means if we have any questions about those transfers or this is the time? I, yes, I will. Okay, thank you. That's and in, in the meantime, if you have any questions, I can. you can um, email me and I'll respond to every through Kathy so everyone can get the answers. Thank you. Is he back? Okay, I'm back. Sorry yep. about that, everyone. <laughs> I'm giving the gavel back to Councillor Wheeler. All right. I hope you didn't do anything too crazy with it while I was. I did, <laughs> but, you, but you'll look fine. But you'll look fine in that color. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Councillor. Wait till you see the minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Councillor Desorger, I think you had a question. Did you get to ask it? We we took care of that. Excellent. Are we done um, on discussions of transfers? I believe so, yes. Excellent. Um, so then next on the agenda would be a proposed ordinance to establish a renting, rental dwelling units um, ordinance, which um, I proposed at the suggestion of uh, Director Bird. Um, I've had kind of numerous discussions with um, with Director Bird as well as the mayor and a couple other precinct counselors have been involved around around general and specific um, issues with with landlords generally. So, um, so this, uh, yeah, go ahead, Councilor Wheeler. Wheeler. Um, it is on the agenda for tomorrow. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it is on the A and O agenda. I I looked that up while I was that's I was supposed to be taking over the other thing. And I had the wrong agenda up because I was making sure that we are. So it is on the agenda for tomorrow, um, and I believe that is correct, Kathy. Um, I would probably wish for you to pop in and and update us on the reasons behind this, and um, you know whether we vote on it or not. You know, we're not, you know, I don't know if we're there yet, but I'd like to have it introduced because it is on the agenda. Yes. It is on um, for discussion. Correct. Oh, okay, so. so just discussion. I, I've got you. Yeah, I'm happy to join. Uh, Director Bird, were you planning on um, attending the a and meeting tomorrow night? Well, um, Valerie, if you're on the line, feel free to jump in. But um, I will, I will certainly, um, certainly be there to talk about the uh, the reasons behind the ordinance. Perfect. Uh, just so we get an update and then figure out the next steps. Absolutely. Okay. So let me get back to 
my agenda here. So now we're on to ways and means, uh, which, which just has the uh, repurposing of Maple Brook uh, for I&I and, I and the end of year transfers. Um, so that should be a straightforward meeting. And then um, we're to appointments and ordinances. Um, we have the, the appointments and reappointments that we already talked about. There's um, Clerk Scott's ordinance to prohibit uh, electioneering um, for discussion and um, the, the other discussion, uh, rental dwelling units that was just mentioned and um, the compression release engine brakes. And those are just for, for discussion. So, Councillor Gwynn. Um, I would just say, you ahead. know, obviously this agenda was put together while I was away, which is fine. Um, it's a little bit heavy on introductions of new information. I would imagine that if we go forward with the one coming from um, Director Bird, we might only, I would not be prepared, Otis, to talk to us about Jake Breaks tomorrow, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so that's absolutely. on there, but I see no reason to bring it up this quickly because it's not a pressing situation. So I would say that it's on the agenda. I will probably move to pass it along to a future date just because we have a lot going on. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, I won't uh, won't prepare anything, anything yeah. for that. I just I didn't want you to come in yeah. prepared and then have me say to you tomorrow, we're not taking it up. You know what I mean? Or something like that. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, that sounds good to me. Anything else um, for A and O, or your? Not for A and O, but um, I would like a minute to ask about uh, something new at the end. Okay, we'll come back to you. Thank you. Um, so now we're at uh, economic development, which I don't see anything on your agenda, uh, Councillor Dolan. Uh, yeah. I, is there anything? I would like to add one thing. Um, Councillor Elmer suggested that we have a discussion about um, ADUs in light of the new uh, legal opinion about the condominium law and the possibility of kind of using that as a way to subdivide. Um, so I was thinking we could just have a discussion about that and um, I was going to try to invite the person who's been giving those presentations to that meeting. Okay. All right. So this would just be an item for discussion. Yes. Um, Can about... I ask a question? Yes, please. Clerk Scott. Is there any documentation that you could forward to the office in case counselors were not abreast of the goings on? Yeah, Kathy, I'll, I'll forward that to you right now. It's a legal opinion we got last week. I'm not sure who it went out to. Um, so I'll okay. forward it to you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so just the one uh, agenda item for EDC. Um, moving on to community relations and education. We've got um, status updates of the mass program and the census. Councillor Gilmore, were, is there anything else? And, and, and were you wanting to, uh, to continue to talk about those two items? I don't have a problem uh, discussing either of those topics, but last month we were supposed to have somebody from town hall come and update us on both of them and nobody showed up. So some of my committee members were a little irritated that we took the time to log in and then had no meeting. So if we're not going to get updates from city hall, I would say we might as well just cancel the meeting ahead of time so that it frees up people's evenings. Sure. Sure. Yeah. If you don't, if you as chair don't, don't feel a pressing need, um, then that's certainly your, your purview to, and I do think, you know, during the summer, there's nothing wrong with taking a month off. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I would be okay with running it by my committee. I, I think we're expecting some updates because we're like moving through the different phases. So eventually masks are going to go by the wayside and, you know, we want to keep on top of that. But also the census, um, I know they're starting to pick up again. And I know that they're hiring people to go out and knock on doors. And so it'd be interesting to get an update if an update's available. Right. Who would provide an update like that? Is there a, is there a local point person? 
I think the first time we talked about it, um, Danny Letourneau was present. I can't remember if she said that she personally would do this, but I know that the mayor's office is trying to work on, um, you know, promoting the census. Obviously, you know, we've got some uh, financial interest in getting people to, to answer. Right. So well, I, I was expecting it to be her, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to call her out if I'm incorrect. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess we don't have anyone from the city on the line, um, well, from the mayor's office. Yeah. So you could you could put out an invitation if you'd like, and um, if they get back to you, hold the meeting, and if they don't, um, you know, you could cancel it, or if you just want to skip a month and invite them to the uh, to the August one. What what do you what do you think? You know, why don't we just go ahead and skip a month? I know people are going to be out, okay. and I think August might be a little more relevant, right? Yeah, that that sounds good. All right, so um, so there will be no uh, CRE meeting on July twenty. Um, so next on the agenda is a city clerk report. Clerk Scott. So we just, um, clerk's offices around the state just heard yesterday that the governor had signed um, some permanent and some temporary changes to election law into effect. One of which uh, a lot of people have probably heard the state will be mailing out mail in ballot requests they'll be sending that to all residents they'll be sending it on july 15th um so anyone will be allowed to vote by mail for any reason there will be no restrictions as there are on some absentee applications there will be early voting for september which in january before covid life happened was not expected um so we're just we just got all the information. We're trying to absorb it, figure out how all of these new laws are going to be put into effect and how we are going to um, handle the load of mail-in ballots, which will be wonderful. That's a great option. I really appreciate it. As well as still holding a physical election on uh, in September and November. So. Stay tuned. It's going to be a fun year, folks. That's for sure. Councilor yeah. Gwynn, did you have a question? Yes, Clerk Scott, I noticed on my agenda uh, we're taking on um, the ordinance to prohibit electioneering during early and absentee voting for all elections discussion. Um, that's on the agenda for mm -hmm. um, appointments ordinances. Is that something you're going to talk to us about? Is that something that's been being bumped along? Are we ready to talk about it? So this item that's on the a &O agenda deals with um, local elections more than it does state general and primary elections. Um, this was born out of our last local election. Uh, we had a candidate <clears throat> during absentee voting at City Hall that was directly out in front of City Hall and they were handing out information um, as well they were allowed to do, but I thought that it would be respectful of the voters during local elections to also have the 150 foot rule as is in the state election. So that's where this ordinance came from. This does not have any effect on state elections only local elections. Okay, um, so are you wanting to introduce this tomorrow to a &O, or is this another thing that you'd rather do at a, a distant time because it's already on my agenda, but we don't right. have to So I think, I think maybe tomorrow, if there's a quick discussion about it, and then members took the ordinance back and over the next couple of months, we can okay. use out anything um, it's nothing that has to be done right away. I would like it done by the beginning of next year when we. Yeah, start. I wanted to make sure we weren't bumping yeah. it to a timeline that wasn't acceptable to you no. and making sure while you were talking elections, it reminded me to ask you that question. So no. um, 
Councillor Wheeler, we'll leave it right where it is, then we'll talk about it briefly and then get it in a form that we can bring it in before the end of this year uh, calendar. Okay, very good. Sounds good, Councillor Gwynn. And did you have anything else or was that the other item that you wanted to speak about at the end? No, I just had a question. I was wondering if we were gonna come up with a protocol where we can start meeting um, in meeting form with real bodies, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my thoughts was if we could find a place where we could all, you know, get our all get our own table. You know what I mean? Where each yeah. counselor, whether it's committee chairs or it's uh, where we are at our own table and then have public discussion, maybe come in via um, a screen. I just think that we're missing an element of the best part of local government. And I believe that, you know, I know we have protocols, I know people are worried, but with us getting into phase three, I mean, yeah, phase three, section one, chapter A, um, maybe there's a piece of this that says we can meet at the cafeteria and we can all have our own six foot table that are 12 feet apart. And, you know, I, I, that interaction, we can come up with a plan to start looking at that. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good uh, good thing to start talking about. I know I've been approached by a couple people, a couple constituents who've asked me whether we would talked about going back to in-person meetings. And they that's come from people who are maybe not so comfortable with computers. So I wonder if we could almost have, you know, if GCTV would considering consider setting up a, a station for public commenters to kind of do do their their public comment remotely, but it, but in person. Um, so I think we absolutely should have that discussion. Um, I think we should probably have it when President Stemple's here. So, yeah, I just wanted to put it on the table and say yeah. we got to start thinking about it. You know, I mean, no one would argue that this isn't more convenient. Uh, you know, right. you know, but that does take an element away from the best part of debate. And yeah. I just am anxious to get back that kind of that happens. Right now you save your biggest comments when you have a lot to say. Sometimes the best things are small conversations that are said in a informal manner at, a, at an open meeting. So I'm hoping we can get back to that because I think some of the best work done by government is when we're all interacting. So I agree, I just wanted it out there. Yeah, um, Clerk Scott, can we put that as an item for President's notes for the um, August committee chairs? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, did, um, do you have anything else um, for the city clerk report? I do not, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're at the draft uh, council agenda. So we have three people invited to speak to council on uh, the new city solicitor, John Lunt from GSET and uh, Director Warner. We will um, probably ask Mr. Lunt and Mr. Warner to be brief, but um, I think we're happy to, happy to hear from each of those folks. Um, we have the appointments, the reappointments, the Mosquito Control District and um, let's see, and then the the Community Preservation Act language and the the transfers. So this needs to be changed. Is that correct, um, Clerk yeah. Scott? Where the these are not all first readings. Correct. The transfers would be motions for the council to consider not on um, not including the repurposing of 180,000 that still needs to have a first reading second reading public hearing and vote right yes um okay so maple brook uh stays in the first reading section the transfers um are moved up to the motions orders and resolutions uh section and um and I think that's, is that it? Am I, am I missing anything? So sometimes at this 
point um, discussion of the order of the motions, orders, and resolutions are had. Um, if you want to rearrange them, now would be an okay time. Um, or we can just tack the transfers on the end. Right. Um, why don't we, um, they're, they're pretty important. Why don't we put them after the, the appointments and reappointments? Okay. Um, Cause those should be, those should be quick. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> um, anything else committee chairs? I have one thing. Councilor Disorder. <clears throat> Your mic is muted, uh, Councilor Disorder, or at least I think right. it is. Yes. There we go. Right. Um, I had one um, question, and this was for the clerk, um, and that was about seeing if we are able to put a link for the precinct map onto our council um, website. It's currently on planning. It and uh, people have asked that of me if they could see the precinct map on the council website because that's where they would go to look for it. So I know it seems. Um, I'm sorry, is my microphone on? Yes, good. Yeah. Um, I know it seems strange to have it on the planning department site, uh, but it is a GIS map that is generated by planning. Um, there's also a link to it on elections, the elections page. Um, so uh, I hadn't really planned on putting one on the council page because it was in two other locations. So someone had asked me about it and mm -hmm. um, when I was running for office, I just found it on Google because I couldn't find it easily myself on the town website, nor, nor could I when I went looking to find how to tell that individual. Right. So I, I think that most people who were looking to find out what precinct they were in might actually be looking on the city council website, but that's just my thinking. And I don't know how hard that is to do, but I wouldn't think it would be hard. So I don't, I don't think it's necessarily hard. I think it's redundant. Okay. Um, and I, I understand when you say that this website is not very intuitive or sometimes user friendly. We hear that all the time. Um, and if, you know, if everyone thinks that it should go on the council page, we could probably put a link to it there. Um, I was just trying not to increase the redundancy. Right. Um, yeah, Councillor Disorder. Uh, just one last comment. I, I don't think anyone would think of looking for it on the planning website. That, that's just my thought. I understand that it's a GIS. I, I understand. I hear what you're saying, but <clears throat> that would be one of the last places I would have thought of looking. On um, elections, yes, but. Um, I think this is good discussion. Um, I just, while the discussion was happening, was on the website, and it is a little bit difficult to find uh, you know we have a search box on the website but if you type precinct map it doesn't mm -hmm. come up you have to type precincts with an s um, which i think makes it a little difficult um, but it does come it does come right up um in google um so um maybe it's something to to, to think about some more or to ask um president stemple's um take on it so would you like me to send an email to Ashley and ask if she would like that done? Um, it, you know, not not this, tomorrow, but you know, in in the relatively short time frame. Councilor Disorder, would you like that? Yeah, it, that can be for you know in the next few weeks or even for August, but I think it's something that should be done because it is hard to find. So we can wait a little while. I don't want to bother Ashley right now. 
in terms okay. of sample. Okay, and um, and that that'll be a good discussion to have because there have in the past been questions about um, posting things to the council website because um, because right now it's mainly just the minutes and the the re record of the votes and the contact info. Um, but I know from speaking with President Stemple that there's there's a desire to have maybe um, more access for um, agenda packets so that the public can can access those easier. Um, so we could have that part of part of that discussion. So maybe it can just be part of a larger discussion. I think that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Is there uh, anything else before we go? All right. Seeing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So move to Sorger. Second, Gilmore. All those in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned at 637. Thanks, everyone.